All right. Welcome to another class of uh, nonlinear control systems uh, or control of nonlinear dynamical systems, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So uh, last week we had started talking about uh, the you know the central analysis method of nonlinear control, uh, which is this uh, Lyapunov stability theorems, right? So we started with some you know preliminaries that is we talked about function classes the class k l class k r and so on then uh, we went on to discuss definiteness and how they are connected to these function classes and also how to extend the notions of definiteness of matrices to definiteness of functions right so basically we uh, we understood or we uh, figured that any positive definite or a definite matrix or positive definite matrix is going to lead to a positive definite function okay once we construct a quadratic form out of it okay so we saw some nice examples uh, of course we've also had these easy conditions to test definiteness and so on yeah uh, so again definiteness positive definiteness and so on so we had these relatively easier conditions uh, then we talked about radial unboundedness so these were all properties and I think there is also of course once we had radial unboundedness then we also spoke about decrescence for which we didn't give any easier characterization. Uh, this is because uh, the easier characterization is not easy at all. I mean if you are interested you can look at Vidya Sagar's book to see this easier characterization but it is not very easy. Yeah. So uh, I would definitely say that uh, it is it would be very very uh, beneficial for all of you to go back and look at uh, Vidya Sagar's book at least once in a while to see how things are going I mean the chapter again I forget the chapter number but it's very easy to find you can see the uh, Lyapunov stability analysis chapter in Vidya Sagar's book a lot of the material that is here is being derived derived from there yeah it's one of the most comprehensive and very very uh, you know uh, mathematically precise uh, description of all this yeah so because now that you've seen this I've made it of course a little bit distilled it and toned it down from the Vidya Sagar language so now now that you've seen this and you understand this material it will definitely uh, be easier for you to follow what's in Vidya Sagar's book okay all right and then finally we had semi definiteness properties so we had four properties positive definiteness radial unboundedness decrescence and semi definiteness we already said that positive definiteness was connected to uh, stability, asymptotic stability, so local properties. Radial unboundedness is connected to global properties, so global asymptotic stability. Decrescence is connected to uniformity, so uniform stability properties. And finally, uh, semi definiteness is just connected to plane stability, okay, nothing more than that. All right, so we uh, also started discussing the Lyapunov theorems themselves, all right. Uh, I believe that I had mentioned that we will look at the theorems first, uh, understand them, maybe even try to apply them a little bit. Then we look at the proofs of you know at least one bit. Yeah, we we'll look at proof of some of it at least. Yeah, so that we once you see a proof of sort of one version of the theorem, uh, everything else uh, you know sort of follows. Not difficult to conclude the rest. Okay. All right. So we uh, started with this structure of the dynamics. Yes, um, and we of course assumed all the nice things that is 0 is the equilibrium point and f is locally Lipschitz so that existence of unique solutions is not a problem at all, all right. And then we defined the notion of Lie derivative or directional derivative. I, I mentioned very clearly that the function v of x or v of x comma t has no connection to a dynamical system as such. It is just a function of some variable x and some variable t, yeah. Then when you take the derivative or this directional derivative that is when you bring in the dynamics of the system through this term yeah. In fact you will see uh, a lot of times that we use the same structure of v of x yeah to analyze many different systems okay. So that is why this is very uh, carefully defined okay. It is a definition whenever I use this notation this notation implies I am defining something. Okay, it is not just an equality. 
yeah you might think it's an equality because all we did was compute a v dot but it is not by no stretch of imagination because when i define a function of x and t i'm not saying anything about dependence of anything on time at all right i'm just defining functions of x and t at max you can take the partial of v with respect to t but there is no note there would be no notion of taking partial with respect to x because x is itself an independent variable once i define v x t okay but only when i take a derivative and i define it so that you have dependence of x also on t through this evolution okay it's as simple as that so this i'm saying so many words but this is just to sort of impress upon you that the function v has no connection to your dynamics all right and many and many a times the same function v will be used to analyze different dynamical systems all right excellent then we did the i believe the first two statements we said that we first require to have a candidate lyapunov function what is a candidate lyapunov function it is a c1 function of state and time such uh, such that v is positive definite this is the minimum requirement for it to be a candidate lyapunov function and then you need some of these conditions to be satisfied okay if v dot is only negative semi definite that is it is not definite just that it it never takes positive values so v dot never takes positive values yeah it takes only non positive values that is it is negative semi definite then the equilibrium is just stable and on top of this if the v that you started with is also decrescent then you have uniform stability okay so these were the two statements that we did and you remember all the other stability definitions are sort of strengthened versions of this right you start with st stability and then you move on to asymptotic versions and uniform versions and things like that okay exponential versions the next one again remember this is sacrosanct without this you can't use any lyapunov stability theorem okay so be careful when you choose a v that is satisfies a condition like this okay all right so typically an energy function would satisfy this yeah typically energy of a system for a lagrange system lagrangian system will satisfy something like this yeah or a conservative system the way you no yeah okay next one local asymptotic stability all i need is this semi definiteness is no longer enough i need negative definiteness okay and this is what i mentioned i that that definiteness is connected to stability asymptotic stability so i am clearly saying local asymptotic stability although we typically don't use this word right we've not been saying this you just say it's asymptotically stable and the acronym is also as yeah there is no las all right okay again the specialization of this would be to start with a decrescent v and then i get uniform asymptotic stability okay so the results are very straightforward once you have the ingredients the results look very easy okay you have stability uniform stability once you have v dot to be negative definite you have asymptotic stability if you start with a v that was decrescent and you have v dot negative definite you have local uniform asymptotic stability again local is not something we state necessarily all right then um, say again i'm going to state all of these before i go to the examples all right uh, then you have global stability notions yeah now for global stability i need the negative definiteness of course but i now need v to be radially unbounded yeah a positive definite v is no longer enough remember that the arguments also change this br doesn't work anymore yeah v cannot be valid only on a ball around the origin it has to be valid for all rn okay so therefore you need v to map all states not just in a ball to real number and then c1 positive definite okay so so v is now required to be radially unbounded which means that its arguments have to take all possible states and v dot is negative definite then you have global uniform asymptotic stability okay um, actually sorry i also missed saying that it has to be decrescent 
Of course, if I remove the decrescence, what do I get? What what if you just globally asymptotically stable? Uniformity is gone. As soon as decrescence is gone, uniformity is gone. Okay, all right. Okay. Then, if you remember, we uh, I am of course not stating all the intermediate versions because I understand that you understand that if I remove decrescent, I re remove uniformity and so on and so forth. Yeah, you see which word is associated with which word. It's as simple. It's as simple as a word association. Yeah, of course, when we do examples, it's not as simple. But for now, the statements are very straightforward. All right. In fact, it's almost like a, you can have a cheat sheet in your head. It's very easy. Okay. Now. Uh, finally, when we want exponential stability, um, the conditions are slightly different. You do not use the positive definiteness and you do not state them like that. Uh, what we say is if V is decrescent and there exist three class K functions, all of the same order of magnitude such that V T x is lower bounded by phi 1 norm x and upper bounded by phi 2 norm x and further v dot is lower bound is upper bounded by negative of phi 3 norm x ok. Now uh, if you notice this highlighted green thing implies positive definiteness alright and then this highlighted yellow thing implies negative definiteness. Okay. Now, here I am already stating decrescence separately. Okay. However, if you look at sort of the right hand side, it is not exactly decrescence, but it is pretty close. Yeah, this is how we had stated decrescence. The only difference was there was an absolute value. Yeah. Here we do not particularly need the absolute value because we have already assumed V to be lower bounded by a class K function, which means that it is lower bounded by 0 right? because the class k function at x equal to 0 will be 0 right which means the left hand side you mean essentially implying that v is already positive semi definite by this assumption at least in fact positive definite by this assumption. So, absolute value is not required because v is never going to the negative side at all. So, absolute value of v is irrelevant. So, what you have here is effectively decrescence okay so we have stated all three requirements for which you had for global uniform asymptotic stability right there is no difference as such we have stated all the requirements just in this mathematical form rather than writing the words okay what's the difference the difference is these words okay so the difference is these words same order of magnitude okay and I will get to this soon. Okay. So, this gives me local exponential stability. Why? Because uh, they were only class K functions. The comparison functions were only class K and you can see that I carefully, I was very careful and I said all this is valid for x in some ball of radius r. Alright. So, if I want to go to the global version, what do you think I will need? What will happen? radially unbounded. So, I will need well yeah I will need all three to be radially unbounded I guess yeah because they they are the same order of magnitude. So, all three will have to be radially unbounded and of course, this will be all of R. Okay. So, this will be the only difference. So, you can see that I am already saying V is radially unbounded although I do not need to and then you have all three functions there exist three functions in class K R. Yeah. Oh, I see. Such that this happens. Alright, such that this happens. And if you see, um, I have also said what is the meaning of functions being of the same order. It means they are comparable by a constant. They should remind you of the ability to compare the norms, right? The vector norms are also comparable. This is almost a similar definition. Any two functions are said to be of the same order of magnitude if they are comparable via constants. Okay, so and you notice that if f and g can be written like this, then g and f can be written like this. Way. 
right so basically f and g are comparable functions i mean examples are if you if you have one function which is x squared phi 1 is x squared and phi 2 is x4 x to the power 4 then they are not comparable because you will never be able to find a constant gamma 1 gamma 2 which will relate the two okay so so simply saying I am just giving a scalar example or you can even take a vector norm x square and norm x4 not same order of magnitude ok because they cannot be related by these constants ok great so now uh, we have seen pretty much all the Lyapunov theorems Okay, it's very quick. I mean, is, is, once you create the setup, actually it's very quick to state, very easy. You know how the specialization goes, right? Start with negative semi-definiteness for V dot, you get stability. Go to negative definiteness for V dot, asymptotic stability. And if you go to radial unboundedness for V, you get global asymptotic stability. If you add decrescence on V, you get uniformity in all of these, okay? And finally, for exponential stability, you need, remember, we already, it's part of your assignment, first assignment, that uh, exponential stability in fimes implies uniform uh, asymptotic stability. And similarly, global exponential stability implies global uniform asymptotic stability. So, exponential is by uh, definition uniform. Therefore, you need the decrescence conditions also, right, whenever you are talking about exponential stability. So, exponential stability requires existence of these three functions okay make sense excellent examples let's do examples this is where this is what is our you know bread and butter right if we can't do examples we can't do anything the simple harmonic oscillator the simplest example anybody will start with what is the simple harmonic oscillator it is just x1 dot is x2 x2 dot is minus x1 all right for a system like this it should be obvious to you that well, or it should be obvious or you must have seen it before that the phase plane portrait that is the evolution of this in the phase plane looks like circles. Okay. Why? Because you can think of x1 square plus x2 square and you take derivative of x1 square plus x2 square along this. Yeah. This evolution makes x1 square plus x2 square constant. Okay. Just you can check it, it is very easy. Anyway, we will do it in the Lyapunov function anyway, right. So, that is what we choose as a Lyapunov function. It is just half x1 square plus half x2 square. I mean, I have just taken this and divided by 2, okay. In this case, by the way, this is a conservative system, conservative system. So, in this case, this is actually the energy of the system, okay. This is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. Okay, and this is energy conserving system. Therefore, you see that it is just moving in circles, concentric circles. All right, all right. So, I take my V as exactly the energy of the system. Notice V is C1. In fact, it is radially unbounded. I hope you are convinced that this V is radially unbounded. Yeah, it goes to infinity. I mean, first of all, it is it's strictly positive whenever x norm x is non-zero, alright, and it goes to infinity as yes. norm x goes to infinity in any direction, it does not matter, alright. Therefore, v is positive definiteness, in fact, v is radially unbounded, okay. So, and anyway, this is a linear system, so v is radially unbounded, alright. So, you can see that, that this v is radially unbounded, we can just focus here. Now, if I take the derivative v dot, there is no time argument, right? So, uniformity is free, yeah, just like I said, if there is no time argument in the system, no time argument in v, uniformity is free. So, we do not even talk about uniform stability notions, okay? Right. So, partial of v with respect to x times the evolution. So, what is partial of v with respect to x times this? It is just the way you take derivative, okay. After all this definition, all you have to do is take derivatives. It is just x1, x1 dot plus x2, x2 dot. Just taking derivatives and plugging in from the dynamics. 
if I plug in x1 dot from the dynamics, it's x2. If I plug in x2 dot from the dynamics, it's minus x1. Right? So essentially, it's zero. The sum is just zero. Okay. By Lia, and so what have we done? We what have we shown? We have shown that v dot is always zero, exactly zero, which means it is only negative semi-definite. Right? It's not negative definite. Yeah, because even for non-zero values of the state, v dot will always be zero. Okay, makes sense. Yes. All right. Good. Okay. Fine. So by Lyapunov stability theorem, I started with a v which was positive definite, readily unbounded in fact, and v dot turned out to be only negative semi-definite. Therefore. My equilibrium, that is the origin, is stable. Okay, this is all I have. Yeah, and this is a fact. There is nothing more. You can't get anything more for this system because the phase plane portraits all look like this. Yeah. So if you start at some point here, you will just follow this circle. If you start at another point, you will follow this circle. If you start at another point, you will follow this circle. Wherever you start, you will just start tracing a circle of that radius. In the phase plane, okay, it's as simple as that. It's one of the simplest systems to illustrate Lyapunov theorems. Whew. Next one is a complicated one. See, and, and and you start seeing how things get very complicated very soon. Hmm? That's probably the aim <laughs> of this example. Yeah. Uh, I just played with this uh, system a little bit. Yeah. I just made it time varying. All right. So, x1 dot remains x2, yeah, and x2 dot is minus x1 divided by 1 plus t, right. I just made it time varying a little, and right? now I want to see if I can do anything. So, what do I do? I, I sort of choose uh, my Lyapunov function in a slightly more smart way because otherwise, I think I will not be able to proceed at all. So, I choose it as half x1 square, the first term remains the same. And by the way, many people ask me, how do you choose Lyapunov functions and such? There is no way. It's an art. Okay. So you either start with the energy of the system and then try to modify the term. It doesn't have to be the energy of the system or it is motivated by some literature. Okay. It's not, it's not a guaranteed process that this is what will work and this is how I can get a Lyapunov function. Okay. No, you cannot do that. All right. Great. Uh, so, I play with the terms, all right. I take the same term as the first case, but then in the second term, I add this guy because I want to do some cancellation because of this guy, because I want to do this time cancellation, right. So notice already, uh, well, before going there, I should say something. What about V? Is it positive definite? Yes. Yes, because it is greater than half x1 square plus half x2 square, right? So it is positive definite, in fact, radially unbounded. So V is positive definite, in fact, radially unbounded. Is V decrescent? Is V decrescent? No. You remember we did this example, right? Whatever uh, class K function you give me that needs to be, that needs to upper bound this guy. I will just dominate it by bumping up time because the class k function will have no argument of time. So once x is fixed, this is fixed, this is fixed, the class k function is fixed. I will just bump up time arbitrarily and I will beat any class k function that you give me. Okay? So no, not decrescent, okay, only this much. So then I go on and take the derivative, right. I have three terms x1, x1 dot. Yeah. 1 plus t x2 x2 dot, but then by the chain rule, I have to take derivative of this guy also. So, I have x2 squared divided by 2. Okay. So, then I have x1 x2 here, plugging in x1 dot, I get x1 x2, plugging in x2 dot, this 1 plus t cancels out, I have minus x1 x2. Right. So, this term and this term cancels out, and then I am left with x2 squared by 2. Okay something pretty bad happened, right. 
because z dot turned out to be x2 squared by 2 which is greater than or equal to 0 yeah doesn't mean anything because it may just be the case that i chose a bad v does not mean that the system is unstable this is not enough to say that the system is bad or unstable or whatever remember yeah it may just be the case that i chose a bad v i cannot choose a good v so that's my problem hmm? all right great uh, so so that's what i have said cannot conclude on stability yet okay uh, i i thought about it a bit i could not find any good v honestly speaking yeah which would let me conclude anything but uh, maybe you guys can try i don't know yeah you can try what you can get but as far as i uh, could see the system is rather is unstable and and why i conclude that is that uh, if i just look at the dynamics of the system see it's very difficult it's not easy to solve the system can i solve the system actually no it will be rather hard yeah because these two are coupled yeah, if they were not coupled this would have been okay but it's not going to be very easy to solve the system i mean i may be able to use some time varying linear system tricks to solve it but it's not obvious how to solve this okay because of this guy and the fact that this is a coupled system okay so what did i do i thought about it and i tried to see the phase portrait yeah but for large values of time okay let's look at what happens for very small values of time very small values of time this is almost equal to 1 right almost equal to 1 so looks like a harmonic oscillator huh? yeah cycle so for very small values of time it looks like this this circle okay but as time increases right so first of all drawing a phase portrait for a time varying system is also unintuitive <coughs> because the time argument is not visible here Right. I can't use a time argument here unless I draw a third axis and make something very complicated. Yeah, but but you see, it's not possible to do a very good phase portrait based analysis for time varying systems also. Okay, so you see, with such a small change and adding a time dependence, things can go rather messy. Okay, but why I conclude that it is possibly not stable? What happens for large time? this guy dominates you can forget one this term is going to zero almost okay so x2 dot is zero x2 dot doesn't change so wherever i start i stay at that same level in the vertical axis hmm? but x1 dot keeps increasing right because because if i started far away that's why my, you see the size of my arrows this is what is in if i start close to the origin small horizontal velocities if i start further away larger horizontal velocities further away very large horizontal velocities similarly if i start here small negative velocities larger negative velocities very large negative velocity okay so i can see that there exist initial conditions which are never coming to the origin or doing anything nice just think about it if i make a ball what is stability you give me an epsilon ball Huh, I have to give you a delta ball. Can you do that? No, right? Because that everything is going away. Some initial conditions will push you this way. Some initial conditions will push you this way. And and large time is where we are thinking of things happening, right? I mean, we don't care about transient. I mean, stability. Uh, sorry, at least asymptotic stability is has no concern with transients. Okay. So that is uh, much newer results in nonlinear control where you start talking about transients. Yeah. Also, one of the complaints of linear system folks that uh, you don't care about transients. Okay. So uh, nonlinear systems, all the analysis rotates around uh, or, or converges to asymptotic results. Yeah. So large time basically. So large time in large time, I can see that things will not work well. Yeah. All my trajectories will start to explode in some sense so i guess in some sense this is not this was not so wrong okay but you see it took me a lot of intuition and effort to even get a result like this yeah for even this very tiny system okay 